Welcome to La Paz. If you're new around here, we're a husband and wife duo who are currently driving our 1988 Toyota Land Cruiser from the USA all the way down to the tip of Argentina. We don't really know how long this adventure is going to take us. It's pretty open-ended and we're just taking it one day at a time. Today, we're picking up in La Paz. We spent a couple weeks in the greater La Paz area exploring its beaches and mountains and everything else it has to offer, and we have absolutely fallen in love with this little city. Sure, it has the trendy cafes and the boardwalk and the beautiful oceanfront and beaches, but what we really love is that you can still see a local side of Mexico, even in the city. La Paz is in kind of an interesting place because it's about an hour from everything. It's about an hour and a half from Cabo. It's about an hour from Todos Santos. It's really sort of tucked away nicely right on the peninsula. The waters are blue. The sky is blue. The climate's dry and sunny. It's almost perfect weather year round. When we came to Baja, we thought we were going to fall in love with a lot of the places our friends told us to visit. You know, the really remote beaches, Todos Santos, Cabo, all the places you've heard. But we did have one friend who said, you're going to love La Paz most. And turns out she was right. So today we're going to show you why we have fallen in love with this wonderful little city called La Paz. All right. Don't mind us looking this way in our pajamas pretty early in the morning. We're going to a very famous beach and it's so famous that you've got to get there early and wait in line. And so we wanted to make sure that we get there and show you. It's super quiet this morning. So it just so happens that 40 minutes outside of town is one of the world's best beaches, or so we've heard. So we're gonna go check it out for ourselves. So Belander Beach only allows 450 people a day in. So that's why we needed to get here early. There's already a line, but thankfully uh, there's not 450 people. Um, and we were greeted with people already selling umbrellas and chairs or renting them out. And the nice thing about having our truck camper is that we can make coffee and wake up while we sit and wait. You're a sucker if you come in a car. A little busy. We read to get here at least half an hour early. We got here 45 minutes early. I was a little nervous because it's a weekend, but we timed it okay. We're like, what, the 20th car back? Not even, yeah, like 15 cars back. Get here early. Get here early. So the gates just open and I ran down because I saw other people running and they have these palapas here. And there's only about, blunt. there's only about like 12 to 13 palapas. Some of them have fallen over, but thankfully I was able to grab this. So we have a little shade, but yeah, this is beautiful. Mexico is very proud of this beach and I understand why it kind of creates this like a little lagoon and the water's so crystal clear and blue and it's really, really pretty. We're gonna enjoy our time here. So the vegetation behind me is all protected. And so Kramer is allowed on the beach. Dogs are allowed on the beach, but they need to be on a leash and uh, they can't go through the grass or anything like that. And they can't get in the water as well. So he is just gonna have fun sitting on the beach. <laughs> beach and it's absolutely beautiful people said don't go there like it's too busy don't go there it's a waste of time but honestly it's free to come 
I'm so glad we did because the water is very calm. It's one of the quietest beaches we've been to here. Um, people don't park right on the beach and then blast their music. I only have heard like one stereo playing pretty loudly, but for the most part, it's been pretty quiet. You can do a morning shift or an afternoon shift. So you can either come from eight to 12 or one to five. And we did the morning shift. So it's a little cool when we first got here. We're warming up, we're gonna hop in the water now. It is a beautiful beach. It's it's truly gorgeous. I think it was ranked as like one of the best beaches in the world or something like that. I don't know how they come up with these rankings, but it really is beautiful. It's probably one, if not the prettiest beach I've ever been to. Absolutely gorgeous. The water's so clear and it's peaceful and they do limit the number of people that can come here every day so you don't have to worry about it just being completely swamped with people which is pretty nice. Okay, Mar look how much sand is in your bowl. I just poured that water. It's a nice relaxing day. This is some of the nicest sand ever. Um, I can't, none of the other beaches around here that we've seen so far have this type of sand. So I'm wondering if they bust it in. Just know that the sand here is really nice, which is weird to say, but uh, I've, we've been enjoying it. So our time slot for being here at the beach is almost over. We have like 30 more minutes and we decided to run up. There's this cliff overlook. We noticed a trail coming in that has like, you'll see it when you're driving in, but um, there's like a walkway over the main road and it comes up to this top here. And you could see all the way around and it's got the main beach that we were hanging out on. And then right around the rock, there's another whole beach that you can tell those are the people who've been here before because they knew to go all the way around it over there. I mean, honestly, this beach is gorgeous. People said it would be busy and yeah, it is busy, but I think it's 100% worth getting here 30 minutes before the gate opens and hanging out for the day because it is probably the prettiest beach we've seen here. It's gorgeous. I love the little pause area. So pretty. We were told that we were gonna like it, and yes, we do. We're at Dulce Coranta which is a coffee shop, sort of local chain. So they're actually, their main roasters is in Todos Santos, which is about an hour from here. And we didn't realize that until we were in Todos Santos and we stumbled upon it again. But there are at least four locations in the La Paz area. Best Americano we have found in the area, delicious coffee, but they're also famous for cinnamon rolls. You may, have, may not have split it earlier on in this trip. large cinnamon roll like compared to my hand all right oh it's interesting it's like a, a so it's uh if you can see it it's kind of crusty it's got hard out exterior but really soft interior almost feels like a croissant let me just try it mm. heck yeah the exterior is a little crunchy on purpose they even like sprinkled it with sugar you can see it so it's sweet and the interior is all warm and soft and the frosting is melted all over it. Mm. I peer pressured Sarah into getting the cinnamon roll. I kept pushing and pushing. And so now we're gonna go have to run after this, I think. This is the bakery location. So the cinnamon rolls are baked on site here. There's a little patio out front, there's the patio out back, and there's a great little interior space. But this is on, I think the street is actually called Cinco de Mayo. I remember that because Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. It is, what time is it now? 9.45. It's 9.45 now. She gave us a ticket, so I come back at four. Easy, super nice lady too. She spoke English, which I wasn't really expecting because English isn't as common. <laughs> oh gosh, it's a dog. <laughs> he got me that time. I saw him the first time. <laughs> oh, she spoke wonderful English. She actually used to live in the States, but uh, English isn't as common in Baja as it is in mainland, doesn't seem like. But yeah, she was really kind. and so nice and wonderful English so that was helpful because 
Well, Chris and I are still struggling with the Spanish, so. <laughs> Bien. Bien. <laughs> All right, onward. Since we've been here in La Paz, we've seen, especially at sunset, these rock formations along the water that are just absolutely gorgeous. It's they're just kind of wavy looking. There's holes through them, and we kept seeing at sunset like all these people up there hiking up there, and it didn't look that far. And we thought there's got to be a way to get up there. Everybody else is doing it, so we finally saw the trailhead close to where we were parking, and it's not even a quarter of a mile to get up to the actual rocks. You can go all the way up on top of the the mountain ridge. I don't know how tall it is, but you can go all the way up there and hike along it too, apparently. But we really wanted to see these rock formations because they're really beautiful, and then set against the blue water of the bay is just absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous. So we're here at like 11 a.m. and there's a couple other people here, but not too bad. Um, and the view's worth it. It's it's a little scrambly to get to the top. The trail is not exact. There's a couple little pathways you can kind of go up. Um, just watch your step. Watch for cactus. Watch for snakes. I guess we didn't see any snakes. Saw a lizard. It scared me to death for a second. But the view's worth it. It's gorgeous up here. Got our laundry. Check this out. <laughs> Smells so good. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? Windy here. It's not usually this windy no. when we've been here. La Paz has some of the best sunsets I've ever seen. They really do. Baja in general has incredible sunsets. Even the locals pull off and they take snap a photo and get back in their car because it's just, it's breathtaking. So in La Paz, there's the boardwalk that runs along the waterfront and it's about five kilometers long, so 3.1 miles, which is awesome. We've been running there all week. We love running there. So when you're in La Paz and you're heading like away from town to the east, the road splits and the eastbound traffic goes up on the hill and the westbound traffic is like along the, the boardwalk on the bottom. Where we're at is where the eastbound traffic goes. So we're up on the hill above the boardwalk. I know that's I'm saying a lot, but that's where the best view is. There's a couple little carpool offs up here or you can walk up the stairs on the side of the hill and get this incredible view. I don't think there's a bad spot in town, but I like being higher up. I like this town. gonna be a good night. Horchata. I haven't had any since we've been here and I love horchata. You want it to be good and homemade. This is homemade. So just a lowdown on tacos here. They brought over some onions and peppers for the tacos later. First up, a chorizo taco. They put everything on it for me, guacamole, onion. It's pretty big, it's nice, yeah. All right, I got one taco and one quesadilla. I got uh, El Pastor, which is beef. It's the spinning spigot over there. So good. I didn't realize how big the quesadilla was gonna be, so I probably overdid it. What else is new? I got two more 
Al Pastor tacos. So we're gonna dig in here. It's very good. You can't go wrong. Good. It's delicious. Pastor is so good. Hello. He's not starving. Craver's over in the car saying, shoot us. Today is our last full day in La Paz. We're very sad about that. We're getting chilaquiles at this place that our friend Jackie, Traveling Jackie, recommended. She's been to Baja several times, especially La Paz, and she gave us all of her recommendations. So this tour of Baja has kind of been like tour of Jackie. <laughs> Jackie gave us some great spots, but she said her favorite chilaquiles in La Paz is from here. And they have a lovely patio. It's on a like very popular street in a hip area of town very pleasant, kind of quiet today. So we are getting chilaquiles. I got verde, which is green, and then we added egg to it. We both got the exact same thing. <laughs> and it looks and smells delicious. And I'm so hungry. This is one of my favorite dishes in Mexico. Chilaquiles all day. It's simple. It's like eating nachos for breakfast. It's satisfying. It's so good. So it's got tortilla chips. The verde green salsa, which is really good. It's my favorite. It's kind of warm, not overly hot or spicy, just warm. It's got cheese, cream sauce, black beans, onion, cilantro, avocado, and then we added huevos, which is eggs. Delicious. Kind of, kind of all mixed together. People kept saying, you need to put a taco counter. And yeah, we're doing the taco counter. But what you should be saying is you need to do a chilaquiles counter because I freaking love this stuff. It's so good. So much of what we loved about La Paz was experienced and felt on a daily basis, and it's a little bit hard to show you, even though we tried our best to show you a little bit of the food and the places that make this little city special. But I think for you to understand what it's really all about, you're going to have to visit for yourself. In our next video, we are going to be taking a ferry over to the mainland of Mexico, so stay tuned for that to see more Mexico adventures. For behind the scenes and extra content, you can head on over to our Patreon community. Otherwise, be sure to follow on Instagram or like and subscribe here. It really helps creators like us.